Hello everybody, welcome to the video on customer service interview questions and answers from Career Right. Customer service is a very important position at every business, be it retail, banking, product based companies, service based companies or any other. It is the conduct of the employee in a customer facing role that has a big influence on whether a customer would come back to you for a repeat purchase or not. So you can understand how much would the companies care about having the right kind of people in this position. In today's video, let's see some very basic general and situational questions usually asked to the candidates interviewing for a customer service role. We'll not just see how to answer each of these questions, but also try to understand the interviewer's purpose behind asking them and the personal qualities your answer should communicate to them. If you are really serious about cracking your next interview, make sure you watch the complete video without skipping any parts of it. Ready? Fantastic. Let's start. Question number one. What according to you is good customer service? Why is it so important? Now see, as we just discussed, customer service is an important factor in any business. That tells why customers continue shopping with a particular business and not with the other one. So if you want the customers to keep coming back to you, customer service is the key. And this is what the interviewers are actually concerned about. For this role, they want to hire a person with the right attitude. Now, for example, good customer service for a retail store could mean the availability of associates to help you locate the products easily and assist you with them. While at an electronics store, it could mean a quickly available associate who helped you in choosing the right product and deal for your requirement. So the key points that your answer should communicate in this case are number one, providing a quick response to the customers. It may be through the emails, phones or personally. This tells the customers that you value their time and are committed to help them. The second one is good product knowledge so that you can help the customers in choosing the right product as per their need and also show them how to use it efficiently. Then active listening is very important to the problems, the feedback that the customers provide, both of them. Being proactive, which means anticipating customers' problems even before they realize them and being ready with the solution also. The fifth important quality that you must communicate here is building trust. Being transparent with your clients is one of the best ways to build trust. In addition to all these, there are two other things also in today's world that define good customer service. The first one is enabling self-service options, which means letting the customers find an answer to a question themselves in your knowledge base. So for example, if you think of the web check-in option for your flights, it is also an example of enhancing customer service. And the next important thing in today's age is providing support through multiple channels, including phones, emails, social media, online, etc. This is extremely important because in today's world, the customers can come to you from anywhere. Now see, when you talk like this, it demonstrates your maturity and thoughtfulness, both. And when the interviewers hear this type of answers, they happily consider such candidates even for the senior positions also. Okay, so we just talked about being proactive and building trust. You may face some situational questions on such scenarios. And your question number two can be something like, tell me about a time when you acted proactively as a customer service professional or you notice someone else doing it. Now to answer such questions, you have to have some stories and examples ready, which is possible only and only when you anticipate such questions. And this happens only with preparation. Before we begin to answer the question, see, as I always say, it is very much possible to drive your interview in the direction you want. All that you need to do for this is give yourself the preparation time where you craft your answers in such a way that you are able to prompt the interviewers to ask you the next question that you want. As you can see yourself, this question number two is actually coming straight from the answer to the previous question. And this is exactly how the interviews also work. Now to answer this question, if you have been in one such position already, briefly discuss the situation and tell how you acted proactively. Else, pick up something that you observed. For example, 
This is what I observed at an airport some days back while traveling to another city. I saw an old lady at the airport with a cabin and check-in luggage at the counter. Her check-in luggage had become heavier while the cabin luggage could still take some more load. The agent at the service terminal wanted to save passengers money and was quick to suggest to the old lady that she should move some of her items from the check-in luggage to the handbag. Pretty straight till here. But here comes the proactiveness part. This customer service agent was also very quick to realize that the old lady's handbag has become heavier now, which is difficult for her to carry to the flight herself. She quickly arranged a support staff to assess the old passenger till her flight. To tell you honestly, I was really amazed by this proactiveness and true concern of the customer service staff while trying to ensure that their travelers don't face any problems. Now see, this is a very simple example. All of us have got some such examples with us. The problem is, they are difficult to recollect on the spot. So if you give yourself some time in advance to think of such things and be ready with some stories, you can do really well. Moving on to another situational question, question number three. Tell us about a time when you saw the actions of a customer service agent generating trust in the clients for a business. Now again, see, one of the most important assets of any business is customer's trust. And there are two important components to it. The first one is your product and the second one is your transparent conduct. If I were to answer this question, I would try to recollect and quote an example from one such interaction with some business. For example, my sample answer would look something like this. I work out with a yoga class in my area. The other day, I noticed the lady at the reception counter interacting with the practitioner about one of her references. This reference of hers had registered and paid for online classes, but had not actually attended even a single session. I noticed that the lady at the reception counter was telling the client, we are especially worried about your knees because she has already paid her fees, but has actually not attended even a single class. We have a no carry forward policy and don't want her money to go waste. The recorded video of each class is also available for the next two days in case the class timings don't suit her. Can you pass on this message to your niece, please? I mean, she was talking about someone else who is absolutely unrelated to me. But her gesture really won my heart and trust also. I'm sure you also have some such stories to tell. Just get them together before the interview. Moving on to question number four. Can you name three most important skills? required for good customer service. Now see, for me, the three most important skills required for customer service are number one, empathy and active listening. The second one is product knowledge and problem solving. And the third one is communication skills. Because I believe with these three skills, you are always genuinely ready to help the customer rather than taking advantage of their situation. Okay, now moving on to our question number five, which is usually asked at these interviews. And the question is, what would you do when an unhappy customer comes to you? Now see, anytime a customer is unhappy, it is only and only because they have a problem with their product or service. So the only answer to this question is, listen to the customer's problem patiently and attentively and solve it. The same customer will leave with a smiling face. If they are angry or frustrated when they come in, all that you need to understand is there's no need to get affected by their behavior. They are unhappy because of their problem. Don't take anything personally. Just help them out and they'll leave with a smiling face. Okay, coming to our question number six now. Discuss an incidence when you went out of the way to serve a customer. Now see, this question is again asked at many interviews. So a very common one. Your answer to this question demonstrates your customer-centric approach and willingness to prioritize customer satisfaction above rigid adherence to the rules and policies. They showcase your attitude in finding solutions for the customers, even if it means going beyond the standard procedures. A good answer to this question can be something like, some days back, we ran a promotion on our website. On the last day of promotion, our system malfunctioned and stopped accepting the payment from the customers of a particular bank. 
we could identify these customers through our system and approach them with the personal messages, allowing them to take an advantage of the promotion and complete their transaction on the next day also. The customers were really elated and many of them even sent us thank you notes through the emails. Sometimes bending the rules a bit in genuine cases helps in creating a stronger bond with the customers who want to come back to you. And this is one question which helps you demonstrate this quality in yourself. Okay, now our question number seven is really interesting because it discusses the future of customer service. And the question is, how do you see customer service shaping up in the future? Your answer to this question tells about your awareness of the future and also your readiness to adapt to it. This is because someone who is aware is always more prepared to face the future. To answer this question, talk about things like number one, automation of repetitive tasks and how it will help with streamlining the processes, reduce response times and free up human agents to take care of complex issues that require human intervention. This also means that the human agents need to upskill themselves so that they are able to face this future. The second important thing that you can talk about is database personalization. As data analysis gains more momentum, personalization of marketing, offers and customer support will become more and more popular based on the customer's profile. The third important thing to talk about is sales service options that will gain more popularity. A lot of work here will happen in creating the knowledge bases that help the customers in troubleshooting their own problems. Agents will find more involvement in supporting these sales service options. The next important thing which will become even more important in the future is omni-channel support. Because the customers in today's times can come to you from anywhere and expect the same service through all the channels. These channels could be your website, phone, social media, etc. This will require the agents to advance their digital skills even more. And the fifth one is complex and emotional issues that can't be handled by the systems and machines will require human intervention. And this is where the customer service agents in the coming times will find a lot of work. If you are preparing to appear for an interview at a contact center or call center, these two videos will also be useful to you. The links are available in the description box below. If you found today's video useful, do give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends also. To keep yourself updated with more such videos, subscribe to the channel now. I'll see you very soon with a new video. Till then, bye-bye and take care.